Serap sues National Assembly wants Scott to stop lawmakers from taking delivery of 57.6 billion naira 360 SUVs. And Nigeria escapes 11.5 billion dollars arbitral fine in UK. I am Bola Oba and this is plus politics. The socio-economic rights and accountability project, CERAP, has filed a legal action before the Federal High Court in Lagos against the National Assembly, asking the court to stop the House of Representatives from procuring and taking delivery of 360 sports utility vehicles, SUVs, worth 57.6 billion naira for its members, pending the airing and determination of the application for injunction filed by the organization Serap's applications. For interim and interlocutory injunction followed reports that the lawmakers are set to procure and take delivery of 360 units of sports utility vehicles, each of which would cost taxpayers at least 160 million naira. Joining me to discuss this is Oluwadare E. Kolawale, Deputy Director, Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, CIRAP. Mr. Kolawale, good evening and welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much for having me. So you want to give us what instructs this um, application for injunction by CERAP against the National Assembly or the House of Representatives taking hold or taking delivery of these post utility vehicles? What instructs it? Oh, welcome back. We really want to thank you for being patient with us. It was a bit of a technical glitch. Uh, Mr. Kowale, are you there? Yes, I am. I Thank you very much. We would really like you to recap what you were saying earlier on because the line was so bad, uh, there was no coherent understanding of what we were trying to, to tell the public. Okay, thank you very much. I was stating the point um, about uh, Seraph's position on the proposed plan of the National Assembly, as the news made around at that time, that the National Assembly the plans to spend billions of naira to acquire what has been termed, what can be really be called the luxury vehicles. And this is against the background of, of uh, growing poverty, rising inflation, and rising unemployment occasion, uh, primarily uh, by the rule of petroleum subsidy. And so we put out a statement then, uh, calling on the National Assembly, the leadership of the National Assembly, uh, to stop the proposed plans. And that failed, and so we had to go to court. Uh, while the matter was pending in court, uh, we also heard that the a statement was accredited to uh, the spokesperson of the National Assembly of the plans of the National Assembly, not only going ahead to, pro to procure the vehicles, but to begin a phased delivery of, of receiving the vehicles. And so we had to go back to court to file for our lawyers to file applications for injunction, which essentially means that the court should stop for the actions of the National Assembly pending when the substantive suit, like that is the suit were filed for the court to determine the legality of the actions of the National Assembly, is determined is, by the is court. This Ordinary. Seat, is this suit against the entirety of the National Assembly or a particular chamber of the bicameral legislature? Both houses of national, that constitute the National Assembly, the Senate and the House of Representatives. And the two principal officers, of course, are standing in a representative capacity for the whole uh, members of the National Assembly because the vehicles are to be procured for the use of the members of the National Assembly. 
and ordinarily, these should not be the kind of issue that should end up in court. Now, these naturally should not be uh, what should uh, uh, what should be uh, that the National Assembly should be focused on at this time. And really, if we have political or uh, public office holders who really believe in the rule of law and the principles of democracy, actions ought not to be taken on matters that have been submitted to the court for determination. This, again, is an indication of the malfeasance in governance and the misuse of democratic principles, or I call them abuse of democratic principles, by those in, in political office. I and will eventually, we are looking forward to the court determining this in favor of Nigerians. How would you want to respond to the fact that some people are basically saying this is somewhat of an exhibitionistic move by, by Serap, because Serap all knows that ultimately these people would ultimately get to use the or get to buy the kind of vehicles that they desire, irrespective of whatever may be the actual realities of the Nigerian socioeconomic uh, milieu. How would you respond to that? Of course, that not be true, and I could not know where that will be coming from. Perhaps that statement could come from peace citizens that either become uh, skeptical or cynical of the democratic process. It might also come from citizens who have perhaps lost hopes in democracy. But we, as a legal advocacy organization, believe in the judiciary and we believe in the rule of law, and that is why we subject matters like this to the court in adherence to the principles uh, and of, that, and, of constitutional uh, basis that gives the judiciary the powers to determine ultimately the rights and obligations of Nigerians vis-a-vis -vis government and even determine the rights of arms of government uh, between one another. And that takes me and to takes me to a very fundamental, a very fundamental uh, question. Uh, what indeed powers those of you in, in Serap, given the fact that the the general political environment itself could be very disillusioning, uh, and yet you people uh, still muster the fortitude of character to challenge those that you believe are deliberately abusing uh, the, the constitution and the architecture of good governance. What powers you? What inspires people like you? Especially when you are doing this pro bono. It's not that you're making money from it. And yet, you know, there are no better defenders of the Nigerian constitution that I know today than an organization such as yours. What powers you guys? Perhaps it's the same spirit that drives Nigerians to go out to register in mass uh, every election cycle. Sometimes, knowing that uh, sometimes they may not eventually get their PVCs after spending hours in the sun and in the rain. And sometimes, actually, that their votes may not come. That is the perception, by the way. But people still go about to do this. And we still engage in advocacy, such as conversations like this, to encourage people to do that. It is the same spirit that drives us to continue to take steps to hold government to account. Because we understand the basis of democracy. That democracy means, as, as part of the main things that democracy means it is the power of the people to participate and participation does not stop and end with voting at elections it does not mean that every action of government cannot be challenged and what we do is to go to court to submit to court for the judiciary alone as the last of a common man to determine the rights and obligations of the people in this instance and what about the courts it's not us. we are bound by it and that is why we've gone to court and the court sometimes it agree with us and we abide by it and sometimes also most times i must say it agrees with us and the public and those in public offices end up not obeying these judgments of court but we cannot afford to give up we cannot that is part of the that is the basis of democratic uh, so uh, that is why uh, we have uh, three uh, hours of talk so how would you then respond to the fact that the central argument of the National Assembly, uh, uh, and indeed some members, particularly members of the Labour Party, who, whilst refusing to echo to the bidding of the chairman of their party, is that, you know what, we need these vehicles as tools to, to undertake our work. Are you in any way, shape, or form saying that they should not, they should not get the, re, the, the requisite tools they need to, to get to do their work? 
it's very important to understand that what underscores the work we do in CERAP is advocacy for good governance, of course, within the thresholds of transparency and accountability. And that is devoid of, of politics, the tribe of religion, or other sentiments. So irrespective of any of the political party that is involved, this advocacy is directed every member of the National Assembly. You, of course, by the office, is representing constituencies in Nigeria, which are made up of Nigerian citizens. So uh, no matter the political affiliation of those in the National Assembly, spending this money in the interest of less than 500 people cannot be justifiable and this is within the context of growing poverty and this is just a mismanagement of public resources which is a direct conflict with the oath of office that each of the members of the national assembly has sworn to upload uphold it is also a, a, a breach of the code of conduct of public officer that applies to every public office, public officer in Nigeria, including the president and the members so, of the national so assembly, is it, and that is, is why it, the focus is, is not for citizens to hold these individuals to account. So, is it the amount that you have issues with, or the fact that they are getting vehicles that will help uh, lubricate the machinery of how they best serve Nigerians? We need to. We need to get the niceties of this uh, well enough. Is it the amount, the price tag of each of the sport utility vehicle, or that you really don't want them to get any vehicle at this juncture? No, 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 no. It is not about the vehicles. It is about the cost attached, the overall cost of these vehicles. And when you do the cost benefit analysis, what is the gain? Of spending so much for less than 500 people at, 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 that is injurious to so many Nigerians. The last count, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics have listed out millions of Nigerians, over 100 million Nigerians are poor. Couldn't, should, can't these funds be used for projects that would really help Nigerians, that would be of benefit to Nigerians? And these are huge amounts. This, 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 this is money. 557.6 billion naira. This could build hospitals. So, this could build roads. This could ensure that Nigerian children get quality affordable education. The number of out of, out of school children is growing. It is near 20 million as we speak. I really have to play the devil's advocate, not so much because I love doing that, but I really have to uh, let you get to hear some of the arguments that uh, people supporting uh, the National Assembly have also preferred. Uh, they're saying, you know what, at the end of the day, they would have to go oversight budgetary allocations. They would have to go oversight, uh, do their oversight functions, and they need to go in reliable vehicles. And if this is the price of, uh, of that particular brand, a model of a vehicle, why should they not get it? This picture. And then really, the conversation we should be having now is how can these individual members of the National Assembly justify this spending to the members of their constituencies? I would really love to see a site where each of these, member, uh, these members individually, they go to their constituencies and they tell the people of their constituencies, which of course, a majority of the constituencies are there, to explain to them that we are spending 50, over 50 billion naira to buy vehicles for ourselves against the background of poverty that they also see. And this is also in the context of an administration added by the president that has called and are still calling on Nigerians to sacrifice, to pay the price for the common good. So is there any, can this be seen as a step as leadership by example? Is, does this action of national image show any willingness or commitment to the other, ideals uh, of peace uh, uh, or being asserting a good example? Let me, let me also rehash some of the some of the pro-national assembly cynics uh, line. This is bad belay. These boys, you know, they are they, they don't. This is bad belay, Joe. Some are saying, <laughs> how would you respond to uh, to that? It, it's looking like some Nigerians have really resigned themselves to to the fact that uh, they may be so impotent that even when an organization such as yours 
uh, is out there trying to fight the corner of the public, the disillusionment is so, is so profound that they don't really believe it will amount to anything. You have referred to two different classes of people. There are those who perhaps decide due to whatever perspectives they share that this is a good action and that they are entitled to, to, that, to, to that position, which is why this is in court. And there are also people that you have referred to that perhaps do not really enjoy the state of affairs, do not think this is the right step in, 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 on the part of the National Assembly, but they have resigned themselves to faith. They have become pessimistic. They have become cynical. And that has, made, it has freezed any kind of action in, uh, uh, on their part. This is not good for democracy. Every election cycle, INEX spent millions, if not billions of naira, as part of his public advocacy to encourage Nigerians to go out and vote, which is just a tiny part of the democratic process. Because governance is a continuum. People continue to engage in government by participating. Participation also means sometimes criticizing the actions of government. Which is why citizens must understand the importance of democracy. To know that the democracy does not stop at them making political choices about who to vote or who not to vote for. Democracy continues with them engaging with government, saying what they want, criticizing actions of government, praising government where they can, and that also means holding those in public office to account. In this instance, we believe in Sarah that this penalty is not justifiable. It is a against the law. And if we have citizens, we have lots of citizens who also believe this. This is why it is the public interest lawsuits. And we're entitled to this position. And we're not only holding it to ourselves, we are submitted to the court for the court to look at these actions, look at the laws we have, and determine who is right and wrong in this instance. And so, citizens are free to hold their opinions, but ultimately, the court will determine in the public interest whether the actions of the National Assembly in this instance can be said to be lawful and justifiable. Just wanting to play the devil's advocate again. Uh, uh, let's just say, which you appear to be playing so well, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just have a job to do, I, I, and I know you understand. You know the difficulty I'm going through emotionally and intellectually, having to to do this. But somebody has to ask the question. Now, some may also say, okay, ultimately, uh, if Sarah if Sarah gets a a, a good a uh, positive pronouncement by the court. What would ultimately stop these people from just tweaking the model and going for another model that may even be be more, you know, cost-wise than the one that Syrup has probably successfully gotten them to to dump? How would you respond to that? And that is why this advocacy is not against the choice of vehicles. It is about the spending. And of course, we understand that the spending will naturally inform the type of vehicles that they should buy. And that is why even the Fiscal Responsibility Act is very clear on the obligations of ministries, departments, and agencies and public institutions in the use of public funds. In this instance, what is the cost-benefit analysis of purchasing these vehicles? And again, Okay, if you're against if you're against one hundred sixty million naira per unit, uh, you know per vehicle, the sportility vehicle. If you're against that, what's the reasonable amount that you, as a member of of Serap and a strategist in Serap, what amount would be reasonable to somebody like you? I am not an expert in cars. I cannot uh, 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 advise us to the type of brand or as to the spending. Perhaps looking at what and are there not made in Nigerian vehicles that would cost less, that would not only mean uh, contributing to the economy of our own homegrown industries, are there not vehicles that can serve these purposes? And that is why the question I'm asking is, what is the pro process that has gone? into deciding into this choice that he has taken in that has taken cognizance of the public interest and that is why this is not about the private interest of the legislators can the legislators explain to Nigerians what is the process how did they arrive at the choice of these vehicles and the amount and did they consider at all the public interest of these vehicles have they considered locally manufactured vehicles what are the pros and cons how did they arrive at this choice and we are saying all of this can be argued within the context of this suit and also in the court of public opinion I was once on on uh, a radio program and I was 
you know, positing, just like you're doing now, that it ought to be incumbent on representatives of the people using vehicles, especially vehicles uh, assembled or made in Nigeria. And somebody called into that live program and said, oh, Mr. Gwela, do you also use those vehicles? And you see, I was a bit uh, kind of, you, you know what I mean. I won't quite ask you that directly, but how I many of us? You can. You can, uh, and I will answer. Okay. And that is why sometimes it, we need to understand. Public office is a sacrifice. These are individuals that have put themselves out because they wanted to... And don't forget, the constitutional requirements of being a member of the National Assembly is not that easy. And the process of being a member of the National Assembly is not also easy. You have to scale the various orders in your political party. You have to be accepted by the INEC. You are nominated. Then you go to the campaigns. Then you are, you go to elections. This is a process that shows individuals that are committed to public office. And that is why you see the code of conduct for public officers in the constitution is not binding on me. It's not binding on you. It is binding on public officers. Because they have put themselves out to serve, they must conform to those rules. And they didn't draft the constitution. The drafters of the constitution are said clearly that if you're a public officer, this is the minimum threshold of conduct that you, you should do. I didn't swear any oath of office as a private citizen. But if I take up any public office today, I will swear the of office and I must abide by it. So the, the rules that apply to a private citizen does not apply to a public officer. The yeah. law is clear in this regard, which is why we hold them to account. Yeah. Using the instrumentality of the law, not what I think, but what the law says. And in this instance, the code of conduct for public officers, the oath of office they took is very clear as to the consideration they should have for every action they take, whether in the lawmaking process or for any action that contributes to that process, they must always think of their interest on one hand and the interest of the public that they want to serve on the other hand. And this action of allocating more than 50 billion naira to buy vehicles for themselves in the face of green property in the land is not justifiable and not be said to pass the threshold of acting in the public interest. That is a fantastic place to leave it. Mr. Kolawale, we really want to appreciate you for guesting on the show today. Thank you for the illumination you've given uh, on this subject to our uh, viewing public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kolawale. It's been a pleasure. We'll go on a short break now. When we're back, we'll take on another interesting issue.